Speaking of energy, what, what are the common misconceptions that are out there with respect to buildings or, or the building life cycle? Well, a couple of misconceptions in energy and buildings. Um, I suppose one is that people don't realize how much energy our buildings actually use. Uh, it is a very large slice of the entire national energy budget is used to feed our buildings. And our buildings haven't become much more energy efficient based on, say, energy use per square foot or per square meter in the last 50 years. There's almost been no change. In fact, you would be hard pressed to tell the energy signature of a 1920s uh, building in downtown Vancouver from a 2015 recently completed office tower. There's, there's almost no difference. But, uh, so that's one misconception. But we are starting to address that. And we're addressing it by doing things like better insulation, less thermal bridging, good air barriers, uh, controlling the amount of windows and, and such common sense measures. One of the conception, misconceptions we get though is that people start, rightfully they care about the environmental impact, but they don't actually look at the numbers. And the challenge with that is they start focusing on the energy required to build the buildings or to source the materials rather than on the amount of energy it requires to heat, cool and light that building. And study after study have been completed to demonstrate that the embodied energy, the energy required to make materials and bring it to site and assemble it into a building, is a rather small fraction of the total life cycle impact. And that's partly because our buildings use a lot of energy. And so in the next you know, 25 years, we really have to focus on getting those uh, operational energy numbers down because the embodied energy is almost a rounding error. It's like a five or 10% of total life cycle uh, impact. And in more significant institutional buildings that have a long lifespan, it really is down to two or 3%. So if you're building a city hall, it's not the embodied energy that matters. It's gonna be how much does it take to operate that building? Many other aspects matter more. So that's you know, those two misconceptions about not recognizing how significant the energy use is and focusing on the materials and their energy content rather than the building and its operational energy content.